G'day and welcome. This video is going to be kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons type of uh, game. So um, I've played Dungeons and Dragons a number of times before and um, I've never really DM'd the game so um, I'm going from memories. Um, I was never a really good player but I enjoyed playing the game and I enjoyed the roleplay aspect of it. So um, any errors on my behalf for calculating uh, saving throws, uh, uh, bonuses and things like that, just forgive me. It's kind of based very loosely on the uh, 3.5 edition place handbook. So I've borrowed a friend of mine book. So it's mostly just going to be about um, adventure, fun. Uh, killing some monsters uh, as part of the game and um, you know like playing a video game or something like that um, so that's it so this video is going to feature just me talking and uh, rolling some dice so I've got my d20 dice and I just rolled a 2 which is almost a critical fail for Starting this off. Okay, so I'm going to do this video. Um, so I've got multiple characters. So you're going to have to side with whichever character you like the most, if you like any of them. So, all right, so let's set the scene. Okay, so. Um, when I say you, that means that, like all of the characters are kind of in the same environment. So um, the scene is you're in a uh, medieval type town. Think of 10th, 15th century. We'll, we'll say England for this type of scenario. Just to give you a visual reference, think of um, Game of Thrones mixed with medieval style you know that the game of thrones would set the scene quite well for the era and the uh style of this type of video so we'll work on game of thrones as like a scene a visualization for backdrops characters and things like that um so you know people that like D D type of stuff um, will most generally like Game of Thrones being uh, a fantastic um, series that has come out and the production quality is fantastic. So just a shout out to Game of Thrones. Don't forget Walking Dead's back out. Um, all right, so what it is is um, uh, you're all arriving at a kind of like a medium size town and uh, you hear that there's like a, a bit of a celebration, kind of like uh, some contests, like arrow shooting contests, and uh, some knife throwing contests, and uh, there's like a bit of a feast and alcohol, and all of the food and the alcohol is free. So it's attracting quite a lot of people, and uh, the normal uh, town where it's usually pretty easy to get through, on this day, the town is just packed full of people and uh, you, you hear that there's some type of celebration going on but you're not quite sure because you're not from this town but anyway um, you're hearing people talking and people laughing and everybody's having a, a really good time and um, out in the there's like this open area where um, they've constructed like a canvas type tent that obviously the the leader of the town is in and in front of the tent they've got the areas where they're having the contests and things like that and you, you hear the like a loud voice and uh, people relaying the words that um, the king is about to to speak in yeah let's just say 20 minutes time so um, you all start moving towards the uh, large area around the open area where the king is and there's all these contests and there's like wrestling bouts and 
and and then there's uh, some comedic type performances and things like that. And so everybody gathers around, and um, there's like a drum roll or something like that. And the king stands up, and he says, "Welcome. Thank you for." joining our celebrations. I would like to welcome you all, and I hope that you have all had a good time. I have called everybody here to ask for your help to protect the land and the people of the land. As you know, there have been increasingly more goblin raids in the area, and I am looking to put together a group of people, a strong group of people that can infiltrate and remove this menace from the land. I do not want any more goblin attacks on my people and my farms. I will be offering you five people, 50 gold each. You will receive 5 gold starting price and 45 gold on completion on bringing me the head of the goblin leader. But first, before anybody volunteers, you will have to unarmed fight my knight. And you look over to the side and you see this uh, quite large menacing man wearing lots and lots of steel yeah, and a very big sword and shield. You must fight my knight unarmed, both unarmed, in combat and he will give approval for you to join this party. So you must satisfy his needs to join this party. Do I have some volunteers? And uh, at first, no one really raises their arm. And, uh, you know, you start looking around and you're seeing farmers and blacksmiths and uh, tailors and shopkeepers and farmers. And you're not seeing many people that would be willing to stand up to a quite dangerous looking knight. But you just think for a second, 50 gold is a lot of gold. And you think back on your training and you think, I reckon I can do this. And so one of you, raise your arms. And so, this female character raises her arm. And she says, my name is Lorathana Chenler. I will volunteer myself for this crusade. And I hope I do not hurt your knight very much in proving my worth to you. Okay. And the king smiles and says, please, please come down. Let us see you a little closer. And so, as this woman comes walking down, uh, she looks quite proud. And I believe uh, she looks rather noble in that she, in the way that she walks, she's very proud. And uh, she looks quite strong and she's quite tall. And uh, as you all look upon her, you think, ah, she might actually prove her worth. And she walks with grace and strength. And uh, she is carrying a very, very large great sword and a long bow. And she looks as though she can wear it. She's wearing quite um, ornate leather armor. And... Uh, and uh, that's about it. So she puts her backpack down and she bows down and says, My name is Lorathana Chandler. Allow me, please, 
to do combat with your knight, to prove my worth to you, so that I might join. And so the knight uh, slowly starts to remove his armor, as this here is a uh, kind of like a, a wrestling match. It's not a, uh, a physical fight, but it's more about challenging the knight and uh, having the courage and the strength to be able to do so. So the knight looks over this female and uh, she's, think of like an Amazon woman and uh, that might describe her physicality and, um, and so the, the, the knight removes his armour and he's just wearing kind of like a plain uh, leather undersuit that goes under the armour. And so, both the knight and the female warrior both bow, and they both take their fighting stance. And so, as the male knight proceeds to advance forward slowly and cautiously, the female holds up her hand kind of like as a uh, move to take the attention away from her next move. So now we get to roll the dice. And so, um, initiative. I'm missing a dice. Oh, we'll just roll this one. And... Okay, so at the identical same time, the, the male knight for the king steps forward with a big overhand right to basically knock her down. And as he's doing that, Lorathana ducks down after using her hand as like a bit of a, a distraction and goes for like a, a takedown move. And all of this happens at the very, very same instant. So the male knight tries to hit Lorathania. And as he throws his arm, she ducks down just underneath it. And everyone's like, oh, basically, you know, if I had it connected, it would be like a knockout type blow. And as she goes underneath the blow, she attempts to try and grab him by the waist and uh, kind of like wrestle him. But the knight is uh, very, very large and he does a strength check and tries to throw her off but can't really throw her off and she sort of stumbles and falls over to the ground all right just rolling initiative okay so the male knight <laughs> while she's on the ground attempts to have a kick at her. <laughs> and he rolls a one. And as he goes to kick her, uh, he completely misses her and uh, almost falls over onto the ground. And so as... The knight almost falls over. Lorathana steps up again with another move to try and take advantage of him stumbling over to again grab his waist. And with 
the dexterity of a uh, like a circus performer. She steps up in one smooth motion, puts her arms around his hips for a double leg, picks him up, and then dumps him on the ground and does one point of damage. <laughs> And now on the ground, what she's going to do is uh, roll initiative. Okay, so what she's going to do is that she's going to attempt to mount the male knight and I'm um, hoping to use uh, a little bit of uh, charisma and embarrassment to her advantage. So her plan is to mount the knight and uh, kind of like embarrassing having like a girl mount you. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just that, uh, you know, uh, you know what I mean. All right. And now she's going to go for the mount position. Think of UFC. And she manages to maneuver herself on top of the uh, knight's chest and raises her fist to strike him. And the knight, being quite embarrassed over this situation, tries to, to spin and roll over to kind of buck her off. And the male knight bucks as hard as he can and the, and the Lorathana almost comes off the knight but couldn't quite remove her from him. And Lorathana, Lorathana seeking to take advantage of this position and to finish this combat situation She's going to attempt to grab the knight's arm and put him into a armbar to submit him. Oh. And with a perfect fluid motion, while she's holding onto her arm, she spins around, putting both legs around her arm, pulls back, and puts the knight's arm into a situation that not many people can quite understand what they're saying. And she yells out, Do you give up? And the knight says, Yes, yes, you may pass. Uh, you are eligible to join the party. And so with a great cheering in the crowd, she joins the party. And so the knight says, Are there any more who have the courage to face me to see if they meet the criteria to join the party? And so another man, well not a man actually, an elf, an elf wearing a robe, pulls back his robe and says, I believe you will need someone with great power on this quest. And I think I would be suitable to join you. And the king says, please, please, come forward, come down, let us see you. And so a male high elf comes down and the king says, what's your name? He says, my name is Quayo Darkspain. And he says, good, 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 I'm sure we will need some uh, people with uh, skills and magic, but how is it that you plan to defeat my knight? to seek his approval to join the party. And he motions over to the knight and says, 
And so the knight says, are you ready? And spells. Okay. Um, you have to forgive me for this little uh, moment. Uh, I guess I should be a little bit more prepared. So the mage comes over and says, I am ready whenever you are. And so, the mage is standing about 40 foot away from the, uh, the knight. And so the knight takes on his fighting stance and starts progressing forward. And he says, your magic will not affect me. And Quayo, without any emotion on his face, starts preparing and casting a spell. And so the knight starts moving forward with a little bit more haste. He's not quite so confident that he can um, defend himself against spells. And so <coughs> the mage begins casting. And then he casts his spell. And uh, the... the uh, night feels this energy swirling around him and he tries to fight it off and he seems to succumb to the magical energy surrounding him and he as he starts moving forward he slows down not quite sure why he's doing and the high off walks over with a smile on his face. My friend, my friend. There's no rush, you can just sit down and relax. And the knight, not quite sure, agrees with the elf and sits down. And the elf looks over to the king and says, my king, your knight, your knight, is not able to tell me if I have passed this test. So I ask you, I have befriended your knight. And so I've asked him to sit down. He has kindly sat down and he is now awaiting my next command. Have I passed your test? And the king goes, very good, very good, very good. You have passed the test. Please join this young lady, Lorathana, and you may go on this quest. And so the elf goes, ding. And so the knight goes, shakes his head, looks up at the elf and says, what happened? And the king says, he has joined the party. He has passed the test. And the poor knight, a little bit unhappy about this situation, didn't expect to be overcome so easily. And so now we've got a female fighter and a high elf wizard in the party. And next, a small childlike creature moves through the field, uh, through the, the people and says, I believe I might be of value 
to this party. But I do not know whether I can uh, do combat with this knight. Uh, is there something else that I can do to prove my worth? Perhaps you could challenge me to using a short bow and uh, hitting a target. And the knight kind of smiles and thinks, I like this kind of idea. I'd hate to be made a fool of in, in, by a childlike creature. And so the king says, please, please come down. Uh, I think that is a suitable type of an arrangement. What is your name? And so the female, uh, quite an attractive looking female, as she gets closer, she's not so childlike, as in she's more like she's a shortish, thin type person, and you make her out to be a halfling, a light foot halfling, and uh, she's quite an attractive halfling, wearing uh, colourful silk type clothes, but also carrying some weapons. And he says, we have a target over here. I would request that you hit that target three times with one bullseye. And she says, I accept that challenge. And so we are going to try and hit the target. And so she quite uh, fluid-like retrieves an arrow from her quiver, draws it back, takes an aim, and let's fly it. And she hits the target, but not quite a bullseye. And everyone's like, yay, everyone's applauding her. And so she fluidly draws back another arrow, draws it back, this time taking closer aim, Let's fly. But this arrow unfortunately misses. And there's like a, a little bit of booing in the crowd going boo. So we have the next one. This time with the slowness and skill of a master, she draws back. Let's fly. And misses again. And all of a sudden there's a sudden silence. And the king starts to look a little bit disappointed and says, Are you sure you are worthy to go on this quest? She says, two more shots. And he says, if you miss one more, you are out. And she pulls back another arrow, pulls it back, and says, fly true, fly true, come on. And she misses again. Two twos. And a three, she rolled. And the halfling, <laughs> the halfling smiles and bows and apologizes at the king and says, please, please allow me to have one more chance. I assure you that this is just a rare occurrence of bad luck and so she's uh basically trying to do like a charisma check to see if her beauty can sway the king being a young beautiful halfling <laughs> a one so the king fails his uh fails the charisma check and says I will give you three more arrows to hit twice, and one must be a bullseye. All right. And she says, thank you. And so, knowing that she must hit, she pulls back her arrow, 
slowly draws back and shoots. Bless me. Yay! <laughs> 19. And so she hits a target with an almost absolute bullseye. And the crowd's like, yay! And she's uh, quite happy about that. And now Narasanda pulls back the arrow, aims not for the bullseye, but for the arrow that she's already hit just next to the bullseye. And let's go and find this. And <laughs> a one. And the arrow hits the side of the target, goes flying off in a different direction, and skewers uh, someone who's standing off in the distance hat, and the hat goes flying off. And the crowd goes silent for a moment. And she goes, I have one more shot. And so she has, oh God, I can't even remember if she's hit the target or not. I think she has. All right, so she's got one more shot to hit the target. Let's fly. And she hits the target. Wow, that was stressful. And uh, the king says, Welcome to the party. Please join with the others. So Narasanda joins the rest of the party. And then... Oh, give me a second. And then... A young male... Wearing a set of... Uh, chain mail carrying a great axe, three javelins, or spears, says, you will need a man of strength. And the, the knight quite likes this idea and uh, is uh, more than happy about this situation because he gets to have combat with a, um, another male. And this man is... Uh, very noble in his background and the clothes not the clothes but the armor backpack shoes boots everything he's wearing is very ornately made and uh, he would look uh, at place right next to the king and um, he says my name is Davros Songsteel I would like to lead your party in this quest to rid the land of goblins. Any evil must be eradicated. And so the Davros bows to the knight and says, may we begin combat. And so Davros puts his weapons down and um, and both Davros and the King's Knight progress forward in a fighting stance to have combat to see whether Davros is going to be suitable. And so uh, the Knight proceeds forward and uh, tries to, uh, instead of attacking this time, he's going to go for the wrestling way. And he's going to go for like a double arm hold on Davros. And Davros just sidesteps him with ease, and uh, the poor knight looks quite frustrated again. And as that happens, Davros goes to kind of like give him a kick in the body. Uh, and Davros strikes and he misses and almost falls over. I'm rolling really well today. And uh, so, initiative. Oh, at the same time, like in a, uh, a boxing match, both Davros and the knight right themselves, and they both swing with right hand hooks. So it's basically one guy's going like this, and the other guy's coming around to swing, both at the same time. All right, uh, the knight and Davros. <laughs> 
and they both connect with punches on the side of each other's head. And uh, Davros takes two points of damage and um, the knight takes one point of damage. I'll go for initiative again. And the knight, now actually having a smile on his face, he actually had a little bit of success, moves forward to again go for another wrestling move to try and take him down. Um, you know, this isn't really a damaging contest, it's more about uh, to check how, you know, if he's worth it. And again, he tries to grab and wrestle him. Another two. And uh, that fails. So, Davros, this time, attempts to do the same thing and tries to take advantage of him being off guard and grab him and wrestle him to the ground. Oh, yes. And Davros, with ease, grabs both arms and kind of picks him up and dumps him onto the ground. Not with like a damaging dump, but just, uh, you know, get him to the ground so he achieves what he wants to do. Initiative. All right, so the knight attempts to, again, uh, get back to his feet. So he's going to attempt to get back to his feet for his move. And, um, uh, yeah, he's going to get back to his feet. So the knight gets back to his feet and Davros has lost the wrestling hold. And now Davros, uh, disappointed with that, he's going to go again for another wrestling hold to take him down to the ground. Oh. It's either really low or it's okay. Uh, that's, that was a 19. So basically Davros, with not really great dexterity, but good strength, picks up the knight. Dumps him back on the ground and gets on top of him. And uh, Davros is going to have uh, another go. What he's going to do is try and put him into a, like a chokehold. So that way it's a kind of finishing move without hurting each other. Come on, you can do it. 18. So... Davros, as the knight struggles to get from underneath Davros, um, the knight gives up his back, as we would say in UFC, and uh, Davros, uh, without much grace, more like a, uh, uh, we won't say what I was thinking, but anyway, uh, basically, roughly, takes his back and uh, with one beautiful sweep motion, sweeps his arm under the neck, brings it up and just gets his arm underneath the jaw and then pulls him back over onto his back and says, do you give up? And the knight says, I never give up, but you have passed this test. And so Davros with a smile on his face, uh, let him go and uh, the knight, didn't seem to be too disappointed. He was actually quite happy about that situation because it was a fair contest. Or not a fair contest, but, you know, a good contest. And so the king says, Davros, Davros, come over here, please. Join the party. <sighs> okay. And so... There's like a, lots of cheering and celebration because they've had like a, a good wrestling match between like a, two noblemen that would kind of be like a knights type of thing. And uh, they quite enjoyed that. And then the next person to come into it, his name is Quithana Ruby Mace. And he steps forward and uh, without saying any words, the king notices him and says, please come over. Tell me, what is your name? And he says his name's Quithana Ruby Mace. And uh, it's quite obvious to everyone that he's a dwarf. He's a hill dwarf. And he is carrying a quite a large war hammer. He has a hand axe and he's wearing chainmail, a shield, a number of symbols, backpacks, and uh, quite a lot of other stuff, actually. He's, got, he's heavily laden. 
Uh, he looks reasonably strong. Um, and he's a reasonably attractive dwarf. He looks, um, uh, you know, he wouldn't look out of place leading, uh, you know, being like a, a leader or a king or something like that, a king dwarf or something, but he's not a king. Anyway, um, he says, I believe on a quest like this, you should always have someone that has the power to heal. And um, the king asks, you know, who do you pray to? Who is your god? And um, he says uh, a god's name and says, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, dwarves of that church is always welcome here. And... Uh, um, we do not need to prove your worth for this quest. It would be my pleasure to have you here with this group. And uh, now I believe that this group is complete. And so the king says, Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, I would like to thank all of the part of people in this party for offering their services uh, mercenary services to rid the area of goblins and so the parties join together so you have a female fighter Lothana. you have a male fighter a noble male fighter Davros you have a high elf wizard you have a hill dwarf cleric and you also have a quite an attractive halfling that just happens to look like a uh, she might be handy when uh, things need to be quiet. And so he says, I have prepared a map for you where my intelligence suggests that uh, this area where the goblin camp is. So it is a uh, completion for this quest is bringing me the head of the leader goblin and ridding any other goblin raids and goblins of the area and driving them back into the mountains. And everyone's like, yay! So everyone's very, very happy that the king has actively uh, gone about trying to uh, fix some of the problems in the area and, uh, you know, people like feeling more secure and uh, everybody's very, very happy and, uh, you know, the king gets extra charisma and uh, everyone likes him and things like that. So, you know, he's a good king. So um, we're working on the theme of, uh, you know, it's a good party. They're all, well, none of them are evil. I won't tell you their alignments. You'll have to work that out. Okay, so um, I'll probably stop this video now, have a little break, and then I'll come back and... I'll continue on with the first part of the journey and um, hopefully you like, there'll be, a, there'll be a few people that like this type of series, but you know, it's all about just being sort of quiet and talking and making sounds and uh, I kind of like d and I, I know I'm definitely not the best DM, um, but I think, you know, give me some time, I'll get better. All right, I'll see you soon.